it a attack cloud of words because we have been talking about process mining we have been talking about what else which means which is the word which should be in bold and which should be smaller in this one can somebody help me which is the word that should be in bold and which one should be small tag clouds let me give you some hints aha uh -huh, business excellent no does my machine wants to follow me that's noise yep that was very fast indeed business is the word that should be big which means when we started i think it's march last year uh, with looking at process mining as a complement to the services that a consultant brings to market it all is about business so another word which is missing is value uh, what what are we trying to do which means uh, are we looking into process mining from from a fund perspective or from a business perspective so you will hear throughout the presentation that value is a dominant term. Other terms, to start with definitions, is discovery and exploration. It is a totally different ballpark than BI and traditional mining and so on and so forth. So I want to stress a number of things we did differently than we would do in a data mining or a BI. And uh, that brings me to, oh, I have to stand behind the machine. That has to a little bit backward, which means where I'm coming from. So I was about, 12 to 13 years in IT services and I built services for those companies and then I spent about 15 years with Deloitte as a, as a consulting partner in CIO services, both strategy and ERP. So you see that the whole career was technology and business, so both in combination. And that is, let's say, why we got so interested in process mining and if we say we, we talk about, uh, I really have to, I really have to give some tips already up front. When you start process mining in front of executives, and we had the testimonial of Volkswagen, if you see those images in front of an executive, you get questions you really don't like in the first instance. Don't tell me what I already know. Make me smarter. So there is, yes, of course, there is conformance, and you have to test what is active with that client, and but beware that process mining, stay away from telling the obvious. So you have to take a step back, look at the business side and the value side, and then I think in the message, I hope I can bring with the case I'm bringing, that message will have a different color or a different content. The promise of discovery is totally different than what? Than really mining, data mining and that. So discovery is not statistics. And uh, I agree or disagree, but it is a really valuable tool, which was not available, to my knowledge, not available a few years ago, because I'm not sure if the big four will like this type of tools, because it will be a job killer for them. And you can do things extremely fast, faster than ever by a human. Yes, we heard about the pain points. The promise of discovery is that you need to have the data, which is the Achilles piece definitely of the whole story and we heard that multiple times the data is the not the crack in this environment as soon as you have the data you can do little wonders let's try and find uh, together out what we did for the company we did so let's get practical or with a song from Tina Turner let's get physical really grab the stuff what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna visit the case that we did for an international security services company and that was the ultimate. We ended up with the board of that company. The question was from the software company trying to innovate their software and find something on the predictable side because we will learn from the process that the piece of the process, well, this really the, the heart of the matter is they wanted to have a predictive side on that. More predictive, you will see that. So what we will do is we will visit the case where we will test and monitor service process execution and service levels. And some images from the book, uh, you will see at the end how we produce results, but also we don't print these things, we don't show them on paper, maybe some slides, but you will at the very end some innovative, because the company is called BPI3 and the I to, to the third power is standing for intelligence, you have to do some intelligent work, uh, in second part is improvement and the third one is innovation, so you will hear some innovation. 
You see the screens you already have seen today. I will go in a few of them and then elaborate on what we specifically detected in or discovered in those uh, schemes. And you see uh, a new tool, and everybody, like Lalil also said, a full list of tools that you need to do a consulting job. Uh, I extensively used a data exploration tool from a sister company also on the campus here, which is called Cinescope. And we use that tool for the middle part, which is the outlier detection. So this is, let's say, advanced analytics. Uh, we use the tool because this, in the service process is built on matching a specific time boxed KPI. And the figure that the company is aiming at um, in the intervention process, oh, let me first start with the process itself, because otherwise you will get lost in the full story. So it is about a uh, security services company. So you see at the left side the headquarter of the bank, you see the, the big screens, the monitoring screens from a security level, they are hooked up to every branch and, uh, and so on and so forth. You see the car of one of the, I took a car with no logos on it so I don't offend nobody. So it's the car from the intervention teams from the security company and then you see a branch of a bank. Also very nice, uh, in the beginning of the presentation this morning you saw the uh, we call it the network, the BPN network with the branch, and then you saw what you see in, in process mining in the Disco software. So that was remarkable because the company has about 14 of these service processes, of which the three most important are fire, water, and burglary. These are the three top notch, which means if something happens from that nature, the, the, the security company is demanded more or less to be on site to do the spot in about 15 to 30 minutes. Depends on the priority and the bank. So, T1 or T0 is the bank, computer room gets an alarm from one of the detectors from a branch, for instance. That is the number T1, T0. T1 is the dispatching, so the counterpart of the security company. In their room, they get the message from the bank wants your attention and the classification, and which means that is the start of the whole process. But still, this is really important because this is a process out of control from the service company and still they are measured and paid on the full suite, so this is an attention. They want to measure that very specifically, so in the total process, a lot of attention was gone to the, to the time spent in that specifically time interval. T2, the dispatcher is looking for an available agent in the network, maybe already on an assignment or somewhere waiting for its next assignment. I like the charts because we try to do that. How much capacity do you need to, to service an organization? So um, we, we didn't have all these data, so we had infinite capacity, imagine. So T3 is the dispatcher found an agent and the agent uh, was, let's say, assigned to the job. Four is the agent leaving his current assignment to the location where he needs to be. Five is arrival on the site. And he sees the window broken in a bank or the water flooding under the door and he does his observations, which means these companies cannot intervene, they're not police forces. So sometimes they have to call the police and so on and so forth. So T0, T5, an immense important KPI for that company. <coughs> That's where they're paid for. If they match the KPI, they're paid. If not matched, they're not paid. That's a simple business model. So they are trying to measure and they love process mining for what we teach them. T6 is the agent, writes a little report. Now we have to say that security agents have not the university degree, so sometimes that can give a little problem in terms of wording what happened really. So I saw all the reports for text mining purposes. That was uh, interesting literature, I can tell you. Uh, T7 is, is that the agent is free again and maybe back on the home base. So the full process, T0, T7, with some pieces in between. That is how these companies work. And uh, that's, uh, the company is, uh, has about 250 agents actively on the market. So it's not a huge, huge company in Belgium only, sorry. So, what is the important SLA? 60 minutes, and you will hear later that 60 minutes is a crucial figure because, as I said, I started with a software company building the ERP system for the, for the security service company, and they were interested in capacity planning and the predictive piece. But uh, after, well, in the middle of the effort, the, I was invited to an innovative board meeting, so every half year, 
the service company uh, invites their suppliers to talk about innovation in theirs. And I got a 20 minute slot to talk about what, the, what I learned through process mining. And their KPI throughout the whole organization is 60 minutes. Now, what happened is, is that they had, they were on the mission for winning new business. So there was two very large contracts on the eve of being assigned and they wanted to know crystal clear, laser sharp, what their current capacity was and speed in anything of these things. So the question was, how many, if we don't change anything in our organization, if we don't change anything on the locations, how far can we get with 30 minutes? So how many of our operational activities fell into the category we did it on 30 minutes? Because they were only measuring 60. So we helped them in measuring the 30 minutes. One of the new clients, with about 1,100 sites in the country Belgium, asked for a 15-minute SLA. Imagine, 15 minutes. I don't know if everybody, uh, somebody wrote the, the magazine of Forbes, the most congested cities in the world. Belgium, again, has the top three. Antwerp and Brussels amongst the top three in the world of the most congested cities. Yes, we have it again. So for a security services company, a nightmare to arrive on time. No money, not on time. So we were looking to but let's go in. we were looking to a number of operational excellence topics. So let's I have three slides on the mission, just to fill you in a little bit to, in the perspective. Operational excellence for them, it's uh, not uh, mobilizing the people more or more rapidly, whatever. They needed to find to, the, to crack the nut to assign a new agent and avoid favoritism. Because in the business, if you assign somebody a job at 5.30, so that has to do the night, the night shift, it's double paid, three days of holiday more. So the question from the management was, is there any favoritism in assigning dispatcher to the agent? So we did that kind of stuff. Operation excellence. And as I said, partly strategy, but the, when I talked to the C guys, they said, operational excellence is one piece, help us with the sales. So in the business terms, that makes process mining interesting. It's not only for operational excellence and diving into the things which are practically operational, operational driven, but also help sales or help marketing. And that was very exciting to do there. That's what I'm mentioning, the T1, T0, and the T3, T5, which is the time that the people on the road is the, the very important piece. So if the whole shabam, so to speak, this, this piece, they were aiming at 60 minutes, and we came out mining all over the process, all processes over two years, so a little bit over 500,000 uh, events. Uh, yeah, events. We came out at an hour and five minutes, so that was close. But what we discovered is, is that T7 was two hours and 16 minutes. So they took an hour more to do this. So we discovered that the agents were doing a little bit over a million kilometers more than they were expected to do. So they were really, really driving. What happened is, is that these guys now have handhelds with the GPS on and every agent is tracked in terms of how far he's driving to manage this, but also the reverse coming home again. So a discovery was not only the first piece, but definitely also the second piece. And then the feed-in for predictive. We already had a number of cases where process mining can help in the predictive side. This is a screen from the uh, data exploration software we're using. This is uh, 400 dots on one side, on one screen. So that's what particular is about this uh, tooling. Uh, and you see here um, the accuracy of the agents noting the kilometers that they drive. So the theory versus the active piece. So you see an enormous spread and that's the reason why they have a million kilometers more than you should expect. Okay, the approach maybe, a uh, few just adding things on top of what you already learned today. Um, methodology, we keep, uh, we keep it to two things. We first, we build a playbook, which is capturing the business questions. What do you want to learn before you do any mining? Of course, we start doing mining first. So we're trying to capture the process without studying a lot of books. So we use the data provided by the software company in the format that we asked. And that was pretty easy. I got a memory stick with everything on it that I asked. Of course, I went two times back because I needed more information, extra attributes. But that went pretty fast. Although I've had to do it myself, that would be very difficult. But the business questions in the sense were, do I reach the 60 minutes? Am I able to reach the 15 minutes? More or less. Every question in the playbook is matched with the business case. Suppose that I do it in 60 minutes or 15 minutes, what is it worth? 
in terms of can I afford these consultants to do continue or do we stop now? That's more or less what happened in, the, in these two categories. Uh, in the workshop, I will dive into the business case, of course. I'm not going to call a workbook. Workbook is uh, project management, and I think uh, the speaker this morning from Deloitte already took a good time on it. Time and activity view. If you investigate, if you set the baseline KPIs, it's what I call the investigation piece. You get a number of improvement areas, intelligence improvements. And here you see the monitor. So after three months, we got another data set. And we did the whole effort again. And there I have to say, and Anne, forgive me for bothering you over and over, and Christian, and saying, if we could do this with the tool, if we could that with the tool, that would be extremely helpful in doing this time gliding window stuff, because you have to do it over. So any discovery, you have to really start over from a certain point of view. So that could be an interesting improvement. But that is fun. Nothing is content. What did we learn here? Three things. This looks at spaghetti, and if you dive into it, maybe other people have talked about it, but I want to introduce two new concepts. One of the concepts we faced, really remarkable, was uh, clock drift. And uh, I'm grateful to Sepper to, from the University of Hot PhD student, uh, University of Leuven. He pointed me, Walter, you may have a problem with drifting, boat concept and clock drifting. This is definitely a case of clock drifting. What happened is, is that the mobile phones that the agents used to get their instructions, the clock of that device was not synchronized with the clock of the server. So you, we got 800 variants where the clock's shifting and you got these weird spaghetti stuff uh, happening and that was purely to clock drift. So if you watch your files, just do a little quality analysis on the clock of the devices and if they match. So simple message. Other messages, we found out that there's something screw, screwed up uh, in November 7th of 2011. And process mining indicated something and said, what do I see here? And then we started discussing and then everybody got very quiet from the software company. I said, I'm not going to push. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to ask the question after the session. Because what happened is, is that there was a software upgrade, a functional upgrade, without upgrading the database. So there was a a disconnect in the data feed up to that moment and the new feed. So we decided to uh, mine the process after that date and forget about history because it was not relevant anymore. Also, an important thing to watch if you mine data. So clock drifts and concept drifts, as, the, as it is called. Okay. Um, social mining, as already mentioned, we tried to find out if there was any favoritism in assigning jobs between dispatchers and agents. We came up with a wonderful theory which was killed at an instance by the boss of the alarm room. He said, Walter, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> sorry, why not? Well, for the simple reason is that we have four dispatchers and these dispatchers do shifts and which means uh, some have chosen to do the night shift so it's always the same person. So that's why that happened. Okay, then let's uh, pick out two things you can do with uh, Disco process mining. Serval range testing. You know the screen, which is a statistic screen. We had a good input from Anne. I was trying to do that by calculating the arrows, each and every of these arrows between the blocks, and put it in a spreadsheet, and then calculating this stuff. It was really monic work. But this is the screen you need. You go to overview statistics, you see all the case IDs and all the timing, you see here the duration. You right click, you export the stuff. It gets, of course, back in the spreadsheets and you can do range testing as if it is a lovely stuff to do. Which means, that was the question of the client. How many of the cases are falling within the category within 15 minutes, within 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and so on and so forth. And then after four weeks after the meeting, the CEO made a, made a comment and he said, remember the slide that we that we saw from these BPI guys. What happens after 60 minutes? We don't charge our clients, correct? Apparently, that was uh, a policy in the organization. If we don't meet the 60, we don't charge. 185, 241, it's about 60 cases, and you add it up, you come up to an important list of attention points. So the discovery was, we didn't find it out. They were looking at the chart and saying, hmm. So the sales guys were, out in the market to talk to each and every client to at least con conclude a contract in 60 minutes or later. <coughs> if later, maybe another price, but that is what made the business. 
And then uh, the second thing is that for the predictive, we wanted to measure accurately the time between the various points. And there we used uh, these timings into some kind of a really sophisticated uh, tooling uh, <laughs> spreadsheet. Um, to calculate the exact timing. Here you see the 105, 113, and again some suggestions. When you leave Disco, it's a really nice screen. You should use it. Huh? Can you do this, or is this possible? So you can put in your questions straight on to the lady and guys. I'm driving them crazy, I believe, but anyway. It's fun, huh? Okay, so uh, I have uh, two, three slides to go. This is uh, what we use for extreme visualization. Um, again, the data points that are known, this is a 400,000 dots on the screen. You see the severity, classes, and priority. This is an excellent tool for getting the outliners out. In process mining, the big risk is, is that if you take average, it can be a spread from 5 to 2,000 and you get an average over there. If you do really exact, if you try to do exact metrics, you have to be very careful that you are measuring the, the, the data which are comparable. So knowing what the outliners are, and of course you can do that with BI technology, but as a slim and small, con slim in Dutch is uh, smart, uh, consulting company, you say, oh, okay, why don't we use this two type of tooling to get all these outliners out? And the next slide is the killing slides. This you see, T5, T0, T3, T5, and you see where the, really in plotting all the dots in one scatter plot, you see where the average is the cluttered wall and this, the cloud in the middle. The, the density is big, so that's about around the 40 to 60 minutes. And then you see all these outliers, and you can see who they are, where they come from, which process it is, and then you see what the importance is. With a few clicks, you select all these and you extract it, and you know in your database or in your file you can tag them as saying irrelevant. So, data class number two. So don't watch these if you do very precise analysis on the dots. So that's why we use this tool for. And then my last slide. <coughs> if you use tools which use visualization as a starting base, which is different than statistics, you print the statistic, you see the data. Visualization is you see many images. You see an image before, an image after, and the, what these guys want to know is every month, so gliding windows. So if you have eight pictures next to each other, what do you have? you have a movie. So what we are doing is we take movie technology from these Apple family to put all the even the sessions, the mining sessions on the disco, we film them and we cut them into a film of about five to six minutes and we ship that to our sponsor, project sponsor, and they don't have to sit an hour in the meeting, we showing them what the nice things are you can do with the tooling. So it is a movie. Or we use Picasa and say, okay, here you have 10 images from the last months, and you can compare them by flipping them as fast as you want. You can make a movie out of them. And we use technology for iBook in the Apple technology. You know you can export that to an iPad with all the kind of stuff. So it is a one-click uh, stuff. So that's the visualization part at the end. So maybe some tips in this respect. And already gave a lot of uh, takeaways. So I suggest we go over to the questions. Correct? Yes. Thanks a lot.